Yes, all things in life will come to an end. For every human being, there'll be the last day of rest. That one last call, that one last plea. Men will not be able to recognize that last opportunity when it presents itself. All will be entirely absorbed by their daily routine, unaware that the final and irrevocable decision is about to be made. They will spend this last day as carelessly as the days that preceded it, and then there will be a dark night when not a star shines, and when the dawn will not break in its glory. The sun will have set for the last time for all those who inhabit the earth. Hi guys, do you see what happened? Diego, please, come here. I need to talk to you about something. Everybody already knows about it. It's the only thing on the news. It's on the papers, on television, Speak on the up, internet. Carlos. The Dominical Decree. It's already approved by the American Congress. We're in trouble. No, quite the opposite. What wonderful news. By the way, isn't the Dominical Decree one of the signs that Jesus is returning? Yes, it but is. how about our friends? How are they going to react? Hey, Tiago, what do we call everyone for a meeting at your house tonight? Yeah, good idea. Very that good. way we can discuss the problem. I think it's better to yeah. meet at the farmhouse. So we have to let them know, right? Guys, That's right. the classes? After this, I can't concentrate on any Me of those either. classes. No one can miss it, okay? So it's Ed. I'll see we'll you guys today tonight. At my house, all right? Okay, yes. Don't worry, I will tell everyone. Bye, okay, everyone. That's great, guys. All set then. Right see you later. later. The telephone. Let's answer the phone. Hello? Just a minute, please. Hello? Hi, Mirabe. Oh, Claudia, how are you? Did they talk to you? Yes, I saw James at lunchtime. He did tell me about the meeting. It's very important for you to be there. Yeah. No, we're going to study the Dominical Decree tonight. Look, I think that was yesterday. Yeah, but the papers only came out with the news this morning. No, it's just that people won't know what to do. That's the reason for our initiative. Does the pastor know about it? Well, the pastor... I don't know, but I don't think so. Okay then, I'll see you later tonight. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Lord. I don't know what awaits me. 
in this troubled moment. I don't pray for myself. No. I pray for my son. So vulnerable, so beautiful. He's everything to me. Take him in your loving arms. I think I spoke to everybody. What's going to happen to us? Lucas, this is very important. I wouldn't miss it if I were you. Don't be silly, Beto. Just because the American Congress decides to keep it this Sunday, many states in America have the Dominical Law. Yes, now it's nationwide, and it will be copied by all nations on the Earth. It's prophetic, you know that! Look at over a hundred years ago, God revealed that the United States would cease to be a country of religious freedom. The situation would become difficult. That's nonsense. The sun is observed all over the world, and that doesn't mean an infringement of human rights. But now it's different! Now there's a national law that mandates that the observance on the Sunday as the day of the Lord. No one can work on Sunday. No one. Absolute rest. But that's not the real problem. What is it then? Having to work on the Sabbath. The law mandates the six hours days a week. Those 40 hour work weeks with five business days are gone forever, I'm telling you. <laughs> You're just afraid you're working hard. You know that's not it. I know, just kidding. If you change your mind, the meeting's at 8 at Chiago's house. At Chagos? What's the problem? It's just that... Uh, I think he's much too fragile for my taste. Remember, there are scars that mark us for life. But for God, nothing is impossible. Lucas, no one has gone so far that they were lost. Lucas. You really should go to this meeting. Dear Lord, it feels so good to contemplate nature to see your power in every detail of your creation. But today, I am so very worried today. The time to put our faith to the test has come. And my faith is so small. Be able to withstand this? I am happy because this decree that mandates that Sunday is observed is a sign of the return of Jesus. We've been waiting for years for this to happen. I worry, Lord. I worry about my weaknesses. Give me strength, Lord. Hold my hand. Take care of me and of my friends.
Did everyone understand what the prophecy say about the matter? I did. I understood. The Dominical decree that the United States just enacted fulfills a prophecy God gave us over a hundred years ago. Okay, I just don't understand the matter of the sign. That's easy. The prophetic spirit says that, just as the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies would be a sign for the Christian to flee, the decree that makes the sanctification of Sunday obligatory in the United States would be a sign for the children of God to leave the big cities and go to the small ones. This is a preparatory step to flee to earth solitary and isolated places. Understand that. I find that hard to believe. Why do I have to run away if the decree was issued in the United States? Ha! We're in Brazil! It is because the prophecy assures us that all the nations are going to follow the U.S. example. Yeah, and the way Brazilians like to imitate the Americans, in no time we will have that law here too. People, this is a matter of faith. God has given a warning. The time has come. And whoever believes is going to obey. Run away? That's crazy! What about the people who were born, raised, and always lived in the big city? Yeah, there are people who depend on cities to survive. Their roots and their business operating there for many, many years. One day, God called Abraham out of the city of Ur. He was 75 years old and probably had roots in the city, but he left without knowing where he would go. What's more, I think Lot's wife could be a good example for us. God asked them to flee from Sodom without looking back. But the love she had for her belongings made her disobey God's order. And you know what the Bible said. She became a pillar of salt. She lost her life because of her love of the material goods she left in the city. But that's what happened to Lot's wife. You don't think this story will repeat itself? I don't think in the same way. But, essentially, it is possible. The principle is the same. Look, if God gave us this sign, we had better obey his orders. All the Christians who left Jerusalem when he was surrounded by the Roman armies did not perish in the destruction of the city. And when the Roman armies mysteriously abandoned the siege, they were able to flee to the Perea region and they were saved. It is very clear. God cares for those who obey him. But if all the children of God leave the big cities, who will preach the gospel to those people who do not know Jesus? That's right. Good question. Guys, not everyone will be able to leave. As you know, I have a small child. My husband is not a Christian. I may not be able to leave now. As far as the preaching of the gospel, I believe the vehicles of mass communication will do the propagating. The truth that the Sabbath is the seventh day and the true day is sanctified by God and the sign between Him and His people will become so well known that all will have the opportunity to decide. Yeah, makes sense. That is where Revelation 18 comes in, where God invites His people to abandon Babylon. Come out of her, my people so that you will not share in her sins, all, all, all. All will have to decide, accept Jesus and the day he dedicated for worship, or sanctify the Sunday and receive the sign of the beast, and woe to those who turn against God. a bunch of baloney. Do you know all this, Lucas? My mom is a big pain. Oh, don't say that. I'm not into this. I want to obey God. Guys, the signs are there. We have no more time to lose. Comfort, house, new car, apartment, college, nothing has any value compared to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. That's crazy. Imagine leaving everything behind, running from what? You should do the same. Yeah. I had a better run, or I'm a goner. Who will go with me? I'll go. I'm going too. We need to plan. 
Aren't you coming with us? I think not. In my opinion, what you are doing is foolishness. You are throwing away all the opportunities of life. Clever. I don't know. I'm a bit confused. I need to think. I think I'm going to wait too, to see what happens. Then I'll decide. Maybe none of this you are talking about will happen. <laughs> That's true. Up to now I've only heard a bunch of nonsense. But why? Because I think this is all a very personal issue. <laughs> Each person has to decide. This business of Sabbath, fleeing, Sunday. Oh, nonsense. But Lucas, the prophecies speak of this matter with great clarity. God shows us what would happen, and the decision we should take, and this was long time ago. I can't ago. believe what I'm hearing. We are in the 21st century, and you come to me with talk of prophecies? Look here. I'm going through a very good phase in my life. And you know what? I don't believe in the Bible anymore. Oh, it's relative. Truth doesn't exist. Each person, each human group makes its own truth. And each one has to be evaluated. Let's enjoy life, people. Life was made to be lived. The world is not going to end at all. It ends for those who die. You seem like a bunch of old people who have nothing else to do but shoot the breeze. Lucas, you shouldn't babble, so... Why? You want to shut me up now? Anyone coming with me? What about you? Are you coming? Wait, Lucas, don't leave. I'm tired of this religion hogwash. Don't leave. What do you mean, don't leave? Who are you to tell me where to go? Huh? You thought you had tricked us, punk. Get in! Come on, quickly! What have I done? What are you scared of, boy? What's the problem? It wasn't my fault. Do you see how many of us are here? The others were caught because of your stupidity. I said I wasn't experienced. You have to be a real man to work with us. What do we do with him, Chief? I don't know. I think we need to rub him out. I'll take care of it. No, wait a minute. Let's give the punk another chance. One more chance. Or do you prefer to die? No. 
then I'm going to give you a special mission. What do you think? I'll do it. That's the way I like it, kid. Good. This one is not as tough as the last one, but it's significant and important. Some of our stuff ended up in the wrong hands by mistake. Important stuff. Very valuable. You're going to get it. You'll go alone. Right? Now. You're going to give the importance and the security the mission needs. Here is the map of where the stuff is. Where's the key? You are going in alone. On motorcycle. Nobody will suspect this baby face, son. Now go. Go and come back when the mission is accomplished. You Hurry the up! Chief. so fast. The Dominical Decree? Yeah, it has already been approved in Brazil by an absolute majority of votes in the Congress. Yeah, the planet has become a village. In a few more days, the whole world will become embroiled in this matter. I wonder how our brothers are living in other places. I have no idea. I just know that as soon as the law was approved, the persecution of those who prefer to obey God begun. True. We did well in obeying the sign he gave us. Coming here as soon as the Dominical Decree came out in the U.S. gave us enough time to run away without the pressure of persecution. Soon they will find out that we are here as well. It won't be long. Then the time will have come for us to go to the solitary, isolated places of the Earth. That was God's order. We need to be ready. Well, at this point, I think, you must already know what this is about. Is it our religion? The problem is not exactly your religion. It is the intransigence of your religion about keeping the Sabbath. But the Sabbath is the true day of the Lord. We cannot work on that day. I do not want to debate religious matters with you. You will have to work on the Sabbath. I received clear orders. From now on, on this company and all the other companies in the country will have normal complete work shifts on Saturday. If you do not work on Saturdays, I'll have to fire you. Lunch is ready. Mm -hmm. 
Did you receive your documents? Yes, I did. It's really cool, man. I had to return mine, Dad, to fix the picture because they came out defective. When will they deliver them? They said I will have it in a week. They will send it to me by mail. This is great, man. It's a cool idea. Having only one document instead of the bunch of documents we had before. And listen, there's more. Soon this car will be replaced by a chip to be implanted under your skin. What about you, Claudia? Got yours? No. Dad, Claudia keeps a Sabbath. Then give me severance. Because my conscience will not let me break the Sabbath of the Lord. The same with me. What about you, Pedro? Claudia, are you aware of the implications of not having this document? The old ones are no longer valid. It's the new one or none. What do you say? Dad, the Claudia, Lord said... without this document, you can't buy a candy bar, not even a needle, anywhere in the world. There is an international control, a worldwide computer network. They monitor you through with optic sensors. And I'm sure that by now, your name must be on the blacklist. I don't care. I prefer to serve my God. I already told you to quit this religion. Come on. Fill out these forms. I will take them to the post office to request your document. I'm not going to break the Sabbath. And since when does my daughter disobey me? Come on, let's do what I say. Dad, let me follow my God in peace. You're an idiot. Look oh, at what Dad, your church has done to da you. Stop it. Da I'll stay. God will understand my position. I need to support my family. How can I make money without working? The job has been getting harder and harder. Besides, I will keep on serving God on Sunday anyway. There is a church close by my house. You know, you should think about the decision you are taking. God is love. He doesn't want his children to suffer. God wants us to work. What difference does it make whether you keep the Sabbath or Sunday? What counts is having a specific day to keep. Isn't that right, Ms. Renata? That's what I think. What a shame, Pedro. The Bible says the righteous will live by faith. Well, then if you will, please sign your severance papers. Tasia, how come you're here? Hi. I'm sorry, but you can't buy anything. Why not? As far as I know, you belong to that religion that keeps the Sabbath. You are prohibited from buying or selling anything. I belong to that religion, but not anymore. Oh, but can you prove it? Of course. Just a minute. You know, Claudia, I've been thinking. I'm going to send you to the farm where James is. I am sure that you will be safe there. Clear, it's fine. Do you think I was going to starve? Oh, uh, of course not. You're absolutely right. The Bible says Jesus is coming back. When he went up to the heavens, the angel said he would return in the clouds. No one can hide from God. All the signs of his return have been fulfilled. The catastrophes that devastate our world show that the day of judgment will not delay. The door of grace is still open. Repent of your sins. Accept Jesus. Keep his commands. 
and live by faith. Those who remain at Christ's side will suffer persecution. We are seeing this happening. Many are dying because of their faith. But do not fear. It is better to be with God than without Him. Woe to those who position themselves with Satan. Today is the day. If you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. The Bible says that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that man is dangerous. In a society where all cooperate for the good of the community, that man refuses to work on the Sabbath. After so many years of struggle to unite different religious ideas around only one Lord, this man refuses to keep the family day. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He refuses to keep Sunday. Pay attention to the gravity of this problem, ladies and gentlemen. He openly dishonors the one who rose on this day to save us, our Lord Jesus Christ! I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Proceed, Your Excellency. At the same time, he disobeys the one who received orders from God, our exalted Lord, to change the day of rest from the seventh day to the first day of the week. And all accepted that. All did. Why not him? Why? Why does he insist on being different? Do you understand? Everyone from all the religions accepted the new guidance of God sent by his representative. Why don't you accept it? You want to be free? You want liberty? If you renounce your faith, then for sure the doors of this prison will open to you. You will receive safe conduct. <laughs> the church will protect you. <laughs> Seraphoth given up. And you? And you? Why so stubborn? Jesus arose on Sunday. Why do you insist in keeping the Old Testament Sabbath? The law of God is eternal. Jesus said he'd come to fulfill the law and not to annul it. You don't know what you're saying. Jesus has appeared in many places. Personally, he has come to say that he changed the law's day of rest from Saturday to Sunday. In honor of his resurrection. It is Satan. Disguise does Jesus. He's tricking thousands of people. How dare you speak like that of Jesus, you filthy keeper of the Sabbath. Keep that up and you will never ever see your son again. Never! All my life, members of the jury, I have seen bandits, thieves, murderers, come before this tribunal. They always boldly defy the laws. I have never seen, I confess, a man like that one, seated as the accused. And of what is he accused, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, of serving his God, of keeping the Sabbath on the seventh day and not the first? of refusing to keep Sunday as the day of the Lord? We should be concerned about the 
criminals running around free instead of occupying ourselves with trying an innocent man. Examine your reports, members of the jury, and you will find nothing, absolutely nothing, that will discredit his life. This man is an exemplary citizen. I object, Your Honor. This is a dangerous man. Order! Order in court! Huh. Well, as we were saying, members of the jury, this is an innocent man. If we all had the same determination, society would be better. The world needs men like this. They need to live. They need to be supported in their beliefs. They're faithful to God. They are men with strong convictions. Men who can't be bought. Men who don't sell themselves. We are wasting this court's time with a case that is very easy for us to solve. What are we waiting for? The best defense is the one each of us makes for ourselves. Your Honor, why not allow this man to speak? In all the Holy Scripture, there is no reference that authorizes us to keep Sunday in the place of the Sabbath as the seventh day of the week. Some say the Sabbath is a Jewish institution. No, it is not. Long before the Jewish existed, the Sabbath was already observed. Its origin is in the creation of the earth. God established the Sabbath. He did this in His authority as the sovereign Lord of the universe. Our Lord God rested, blessed, and sanctified the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath. In His law, the fourth commandment orders us to keep the Sabbath. Jesus himself kept it. Lies, your honor. All lies. This man is lying. Jesus, Jesus worked on the Sabbath. He cured the sick and allowed his disciples to gather wheat. Your honor, I object. My colleague cannot interrupt my client's testimony. Contain yourself, counsel. Proceed. And Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Our master was against the erroneous ways the scribes and Pharisees kept the Sabbath. The holy apostles also kept the Sabbath. Nowhere in the Bible do we encounter the change of the day of worship established by God on the day of creation. The seventh day of the week is the Sabbath of the Lord God a holy day. It always was and always will be, whether we agree or not. The Sabbath is the day of the Lord. No one, no man has the right to change the designs of God. That is why I kept this day. I cannot do differently. Even if in doing so, I must die. The trial has been going on now for 10 hours. The jury is meeting and the people await the verdict with great eagerness. This is not an isolated case in international justice. The intransigence of certain religious groups with what they call the principles of Christian faith have made similar judgments occur every day. Let's find out what people think about this case.
Excuse me, what do you expect in this judgment? I think the prosecution did a fine job, and I hope the jury has the good sense to decide for his condemnation. I think 50 years in jail is not enough. Thank you. And what do you think? I personally think it is a shame the fellow has such a narrow view of scripture. He seems a good person, doesn't he? Thank you. We have different opinions. Each person thinks a different way. That is what is giving this trial a different flavor. This generation has never seen the like. Here is someone worth talking to. He is Gerson, who was a member of the Sabbath keeping sect. How long did you belong to this community who keep the Sabbath? For about five years. What made you change your mind? I had a new understanding of the Bible. I discovered that doctrines are not so important. But what matters is the experience one has with God. You need just to feel. Feel Jesus, the great master of life. What about today's trial? What is your opinion? Should the defendant be acquitted or condemned? Look here, speaking as a friend, I would like him to be acquitted. However, for the good of society, he should be condemned. To serve as an example, people need to unite. They need to submit to the will of the great spiritual leader of Earth. We've had enough of sectarianism, isolated sects defending their own ideas. We need to think of the common good, of peace, that will only come when he is kind is banned from the face of the earth. Thank you. Soon the jury will return to the courtroom and we will know the conclusion of this trial that has divided opinions. As a keeper of the Sabbath and a transgressor of the law that orders the sanctification of Sunday, I declare the defendant guilty. <laughs> Silence! Your Honor. Silence! Your Honor. Silence! Your Honor, if this man is guilty, to the point of being sentenced to a punishment reserved only to the most dangerous and vile kind of criminal, then I want to be condemned with him. Order! Order in court! I have never seen such innocence. In all my life, I have never witnessed such truth. For the first time, light shone in my life. I will follow the same God and the same law this man defends. with bringing believers here. They sing to us, pray, and always try to convert us. Shut up. Get in. 684, come out. 692, you too. Look, here are two more for you. Have fun. The righteous shall live by faith. The bumps had so much faith that they ran away. <laughs> Look at this picture. 
They went to church every Saturday in beautiful clothes. The Bible under their arms. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Now we'll have to go to church alone. <laughs> Shut up. They can't have gone far. Come on, let's go. You must know of the calamities that are devastating our country. We don't know what decision the government should take. The population is despairing and panic is widespread all over the world. And it seems this situation is the same all over the world. Not even the richest countries are able to overcome the problems. Counselors, as my spiritual advisors, what should I do? I've already exhausted all my options. Maybe God can show me the way out. We know the reason for these plagues, Excellency, and we have a suggestion to make. All the countries of the world were advised to exterminate the keepers of the Sabbath, and uh, in a world council, the church concluded that these plagues were sent by God as a sign of divine displeasure at the guilt of these religious fanatics who refused to keep Sunday as the true day of the Lord. As children of God, we've done all we could. Some of them were tortured even to death, to no avail. The blood of these people seems like seed. The truth is that many of them abandon this crazy faith, but others have occupied their place and the sect continues strong. Excellency, they should die. The fact is our democratic republic rejects the death penalty. Excellency, think about it. Shouldn't some die in order to save the whole nation? What about the human rights laws? Mr. President, these laws are suspended in case of emergencies. What you have to do, say the scriptures, do quickly. Use your powers. The sooner we decimate these people, the sooner we will obtain divine favor. But would Congress really approve this? Our representatives will make certain we have the necessary votes, and besides, all the countries of the world will do the same thing. Relax, Excellency. These plagues will soon disappear. I hope so. The death sentence? But, Secretary... That is against human rights. Well, I do not agree. All right. The law will be carried out.
Our Father in heaven, protect our brothers who suffer in prisons, comfort the grieving and suffering hearts, Lord, restore in us each day the joy of serving you. May our trials mean nothing compared to the joy of knowing that soon you will return to take us. May the Lord's promises continue to be fulfilled in our lives. finally gives you the right to act with your own hands. The time for vengeance has arrived! But sir, why are we waiting? Death to the fanatics! Death to all!
this place. Where am I? Is anyone here? Can anyone hear me? serving God's rule. Here in this place? Since the millennium began, the earth has been desolate, deserted, empty. There is no life on this planet, except for the demons imprisoned with no one to tempt. You said you are an angel serving God's rule. But what do you really do? I don't know if you can understand the implications of the work I do. Right. I imagine your work is really very complex. But since you're an angel, can you tell me what this place is? The kingdom Satan wanted to build. But look at what he has done. Wild, chaotic, lifeless. We are in your city cemetery. Cemetery? So I know the people who are buried here? Relatives? Friends? Teixeira Rodriguez. The Carioca. Mr. Chimitz. The old man from the corner bakery. And this one? Why is it open? Those belong to the people who resurrected the day Jesus returned to Earth. The first resurrection? The resurrection of the righteous. I see. Lucia de Paula. But the summa is... How did she rise with the righteous? Heaven is full of surprises, Lucas. Lucia converted from her lifestyle. She abandoned sin and gave herself completely to her savior. Therein lies the difference between those who resurrected and those who remain dead, awaiting the resurrection to eternal death. Arlindo Lopez. Brother Arlindo, the church elder. How could he not have resurrected? This man was exemplary, he preached very well. He even led Bible studies. I remember many people came to church through his influence. 
Why? He lived a double life. Sins no one knew about. The Holy Spirit worked hard on him, but could not lead him to repentance. He hardened his heart, sealing his eternal fate, alongside God's enemies. And this one? Who is it? It seems he died very young. 22 years old. How did you know? Lucas Jobokerke? Did I read it right? Exactly right, Lucas. What? What happened? Unfortunately, this is your tomb. But it's closed! Does this mean I'm lost? I don't remember anything, anything! The last thing I remember was riding a motorcycle. A motorcycle! Lucas, I was assigned as your guardian angel. Do you know all about me? For 22 years, you were an integral part of my life. They were wonderful days, when my main mission was to care for you. When your father abandoned your mother, you suffered greatly. Why did you stop him? We cannot do anything against the principle of freedom. Each person chooses their own destiny. You, for example, when you became a young man, slowly left the ways of God. You became involved in other things that ultimately destroyed your life. Drugs, drug dealers, but I thought those guys were my friends. I wanted to be rich. My intention was not to abandon Jesus. I wanted to have fun. Enjoy life. Enjoy my youth. 
I wanted to live. To live like everyone lived. That's exactly what Jesus offers. Eternal life. The greatest of all riches. Like yourself, Lucas, millions of people lose eternal life, preferring to live a life of short-lived and transitory pleasures. Wanting to live, they choose death. They choose the white path and not the narrow one. They seek treasures where moth and rust destroy. Where are they? In the dust of the earth. But why did you stop me? Oh, Lucas. On that night I had your life flash before your mind up to that instant. But you didn't understand. And for the last time I took on human form to try to save you. Good evening. Hi. Show me your documents, please. Oh, yes. Oh, you were speeding, weren't you? Uh, you know, officer, I'm in a hurry. You know how it is. Lucas.
does this mean I will never again see the people I love? I will cease to exist for all eternity. Yes, Lucas. My heart has an empty space. An indescribable pain. An irreparable loss. My desire was to welcome you into heaven. Take you to meet with Jesus. I wanted to talk to you for hours. So many great things to share. I was anxious to show you heaven. The angels. The mansions. In short, lovely and marvelous things that your finite mind cannot even imagine. Is there no chance for me? Uh, unfortunately, no. The door of grace closed a little over 1,000 years ago. All the saved are alive, redeemed and restored forever. And the lost, dead in this desolate and empty land, awaiting the second resurrection of the eternal condemnation, of which you will take part. What is that music? The thousand years are over. The new Jerusalem is descending from the heavens. Oh my God. Jader! Don't go, Jader! Don't leave me here! Jader, please come back. Come back. Come back, Jader.
What a nightmare. I was lost forever. And I had known Jesus since I was born. Why am I living this cheap and Christianity? This double Christian life? But I'm alive. 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 Lord, I thank you for one more chance. Thank you for the certainty of forgiveness and the guarantee of the eternal life in Jesus Christ. Thank you because your mercies renew themselves each morning. Amen. São as diferenças Que a vida nos impõe Nós podemos aceitá-las Ou fazemos divisões Eu não sei quem você é Pensou de mim, pensou de mim, mas 
é bom que unamos forças pra chegar até o fim. Chegar ao fim, pois, pois o céu será assim. Toda língua e nação, toda raça e cor, num só coro unidos e o regente ao é Senhor. E por tempo eternal viveremos ali. Não mais morte ou temor, só a vida e o amor lindo sonho sem fim. Cada dia, cada situação, jogando preconceitos para trás, trocando censuras por abraços, vestindo a guerra com fim da paz, testemunhando a cada dia. 